uh hi kushal uh welcome to sleepy classes thank you so much for giving us your valuable time uh for everyone watching at home uh kushal jain is uh, all india rank 40 in upsc csc 2021 and he is very graciously uh, accepted to join us over a call and talk about his strategy for the examination and what do's and don'ts he would recommend uh, for you to be able to qualify this exam as well Uh, hi kushal welcome to sleepy classes thank you sir uh so firstly kushal i'd like to touch upon uh the uh, your preparation strategy for prelims you've taken the exam in 2018 19 20 and then 21 and each year you've qualified the prelims you've qualified the mains and you've taken the interview finally uh, getting your desired success in the year 2021 so we'll start with prelims uh if we look at the recent trends in the examination especially since 2018 i would say the exam is getting tougher and tougher or unpredictable as a lot of students like to call it the cut offs have also uh, decreased so that is a clear indication that the exam has become uh, a tad more difficult than it used to be say 5 or 6 or 7 years ago so given this level of difficulty you've managed to qualify the pre every single time uh what are some recommendations uh, that you would like to give future aspirants as to what they shall do to make sure that they qualify the prelims so i think the first recommendation that i would like to give is to focus both on our preparation part as well as the application part so if we see these days prelims is getting trickier i wouldn't exactly say tougher but a little trickier and because the cutoffs are reducing so then there's a scope also of making mistakes so i think uh, once the one uh, part is the preparation so uh, we read the static books we uh, you know we understand the theories we watch youtube videos about things that we don't understand but the second and the more important part is solving papers as well as previous year questions so i think if these two things are taken together so suppose if i have divided my syllabus into weekly or monthly or even two weekly timetable right so uh, rather than just studying in that week about the theory part that i have assigned it to better would be to first study the theory and then also to solve a sectional test paper on it and after solving the sectional test paper a more important part of analyzing the test paper also comes in where you have to analyze all of the uh, sections of the questions first would be the questions that you would have understood and you would have solved and then you would have gotten correct also second would be the questions that in which you would have uh, been confused between two options so i think uh, in that when you read the solution you will understand what were the mistakes that you that you made or you know or the theory that was lacking on your behalf and the third part of questions would be the questions that you didn't know and you didn't get the answer also so i think in that sense you will again relearn new concepts about the subject so i think this needs to be done and at the end when you have completed all your syllabus in this sectional format i think you have to revisit all the papers again just to revise all the tips and tricks that your mind allowed you to you know reach the answer and everything so that you don't again make that mistake in the final paper and apart from that uh, in the last one month of the preparation you have to go through upsc's previous year questions only so in that sense what happens is you so suppose uh, if we are given giving a paper of some coaching and if in uh, that coaching suppose all of the above option is more often than not correct so in our mind what we understand is whenever we'll see all of the above there is a natural tendency of marking that right so just to get over all these misconceptions on uh, uh, during the last 2 to 3 weeks you only have to solve upsc's prelims so that you understand the pattern that up has been upsc has been asking questions so one more part that i want to add to this is never fear the tough questions there are tough questions in every paper what we generally do is when we see a tough question we think it's just tough for us and uh, then we start panicking and in that we tend to miss out all the easy questions i have done this analysis myself and i also suggested to students that in take any years upsc paper and try going through only the easy questions the low hanging fruits that we call right and then you multiply by 2 you will easily uh, you know uh, surpass the cutoff by a good 10 to 15 marks so i think it uh, is now boiling down to down to selecting which questions to attempt and which to reject so i think my range would be around 85 to 88 questions that you have to attempt and uh, yeah so uh, i think this is uh, uh, in in this sense i think you can ace the prelims paper as well that is that is very helpful uh 
do you also have an ideal range of the number of tests that one should take so like if if i can be candid like a few years ago when i was a student i was writing the exam i used to feel very confident at about 35 odd tests if i'll have time i i probably take a couple of more tests or maybe four more tests if i didn't have a lot of time i was happy at 32 as well so within the 35 test range i was pretty happy as i felt confident that i've practiced enough probably i feel today that number has slightly risen like i I'd, i'd peg it at say around 45 uh based on your personal experience especially in the last 4 years what would you believe to be that ideal range of adequate practice where a student uh, can maybe feel confident to take the prelims sir i think uh, minimum 35 because i think if you are solving one test series it it will have around 35 to 38 papers so i think that is the minimum that should have uh, that needs to be done but i think a number around 50 55ish and uh, Uh, this is a one a, like new test that you have to do and then you have to revise these tests again so i take them as 110 tests then because the same 55 paper revised again will give me 110 tests and i think this is a good enough number because in the second round if you're solving the paper it will not take uh, a long time right you'll be done in around 45 50 minutes because you've already gone through the paper as well as the analysis of it but again just to revise the things that you know help you reach the answer i think for the same paper so i think 55 papers like that and then into two because you are revising them again and again so i think 110 tests i consider them as as a set of 110 so i think if you are taking one test series solve it completely and then for the next uh, two or three test series you can just take the full length tests and along with that in the last two to three weeks as i said pyqs of upsc uh, from uh, since the pattern has changed in 2013 i believe so i think that is a set of again 10 to 11 tests but then again because uh, many coaching institutes uh, would have included those questions in their test series so you will not feel these are new questions but then again in that exam hall setting from upsc's perspective i think you need to give those tests tests as well okay that's wonderful uh, any particular strategy or approach you followed to sort of highlight the questions that you got wrong uh, whether you like as you mentioned that there are three uh, major kind of answers or questions if if you may call them one you know the concept and you got the answer right uh, second you know the concept but somewhere you lagged in application and probably got the ans- answer wrong third wherein you probably didn't know the concept so that explanation or the answer is actually fresh learning for you so don't don't need to really worry about that so can you talk about this start this approach uh, that you followed a, a bit more detail so i think as i have already discussed regarding the you know division of the syllabus and then again solving the sectional test as well as you know analyzing the paper then comes the second and again a very important part of how to approach the upsc prelims paper on that on those two hours right so i think what i used to do was in my first round i used to dedicate around an hour and 5 minutes maximum and in those one hour 5 minute i used to go through the entire paper like so I keep solving the entire paper the 100 questions i used to rush through even if required so that my first round gets over in around 1 hour 5 minutes or 1 hour 10 minutes maximum i think in this uh, while doing this uh, i used to have like four marks uh, four as you uh, can say like suppose double take or you know one take one cross or doubtful question mark and these these this is subjective uh, an aspirant can take as you know they feel comfortable with so i think after that one round around 1 hour 5 minute mark every question in my paper used to have these one of the four marks the first would have been that i know the answer and i think this is the correct answer so suppose double tick is there and you know only one option is marked because i am sure about the answer then the second part of questions would be i am confused between two uh, questions so i would have both the options marked the third part would be i might know i know the concept vaguely and if i give some time i might reach the answer so then that can be double questions or something like uh, you know these marks are subjective and the fourth would be i have no clue about the question or the option so i 99% of the time i would skip it so i think after 1 hour 5 minutes these four marks would have been in every question uh, in my paper then what i used to do was in my second round i used to take my omr sheet i never used to fill my omr sheet in my first round because there is a, a chance of silly mistake there because i am rushing through the questions right so in my second round i used to take my omr sheet and then uh, again uh, the questions that i know very well i used to give them 5 to 6 seconds so that issues like incorrect and you know 
not correct uh, all of these questions uh, you know these the these silly mistakes shouldn't happen because in those questions i am expecting an 80% accuracy or 85% accuracy so i think this would hardly take 5 second per question and then you just ask yourself are you sure about the answer 99.9% of the times your mind will reply that okay this is the answer done so you mark those questions then you come to the questions that you were uh, sure about in two or three options right two options majorly then i used to do this reverse engineering kind of a thing where i used to read the option and try to form the question based on that option i think whichever option gave me the closest to the question that was asked no i used to mark that and i think around 50 to 60% of the times my answer would have been correct in that sense i think this would take an, another around 40 minutes so i think uh, by this time we would have reached around 1 hour 45 minute mark then we would be left with the category that i have no clue about the question or the option and the category in which i think i know but i need to give some time for example last year there was a question about uh, the indus river system wherein three rivers used to come and flow and you know meet that fourth yeah. river and something like that yeah. so so everybody knows that map right but then it requires a little bit of uh, more thinking so Except i think not, right? yes so i think even if so now this question everybody would think that they can attempt but then this would also take a little time you know so i would have kept this question for the third round so in that next 10 minutes if i can solve like five six questions like this i used to give them time because two minutes per question is good enough time uh, then uh, in the last five minutes i used to again now i used to like see how many questions are remaining so suppose there are more than 20 questions are still remaining so then uh, then i would see that uh, around five impossible questions which i can mark around you know five out of 20 or something like that if my number has reached around 85 86 then i would leave another questions but uh, yeah in the last 5 minutes you can go for your you know testing your luck but no, don't do that for more than 3 to 4 questions otherwise they would fetch you ultimately negative marks only so i think this would have been my paper strategy for the gs part so i think this has really helped me in you know uh, in you know getting past that cut off because serious aspirants even if they miss the cut off it is not more than by 5 marks or 3 marks or 4 marks so i think these two three questions that i used to save from this strategy used to help me cross over the line every time i'll just add one last uh, mm-hmm. line to this uh, this is probably the most comprehensive the most uh, detailed approach that you can follow for uh, the upsc prelims examination everyone who's watching at home uh please try to emulate this strategy i personally followed this strategy i i have been in the process for over 10 years now and i can assure you that everybody uh, who i know uh who qualifies the prelims every year by at least a margin of 5 or 10 marks does follow this strategy you have to go through the question paper at least twice i personally used to do it three times but there were a couple of years uh in my time when the exam was relatively simpler it was very very current affairs based so we could actually push our marks to 140 and 150 and 150 plus as well right so this is not the time so even if if even if you're able to go through the set of questions two times and get a good healthy number of questions in as you said around 85 uh you will definitely be able to qualify the cut off if there's a strategy behind how, behind how you've approached the questions so that's a, that's a wonderful strategy thank you for putting it in as many words kushal uh we'll move to the mains now now that's a very very phenomenal ach- achievement i would say uh qualifying the mains year after year so that means there was a methodical approach in how you uh, approach the mains examination as well and that is what probably saw you qualify it year after year can you talk a little about that strategy so i think uh, this uh, mains as per my understanding is the most static part of the upsc preparation prelims you cannot be sure interview again you cannot be sure but mains if you know if you have understood the gist of how to prepare i think you will uh, you know clear year on year so i think my strategy would again be very simple here so what you i used to do i should take upsc syllabus and then in for uh, for gs 1 2 and 3 for sn ethics we'll discuss later for gs 1 2 and 3 what i used to do was there is 20 sub parts in the syllabus if you see for gs 1 suppose i'm giving an example so for gs 1 there are 20 sub parts what i used to do was i used to uh, uh, mark mark these sub parts or you should copy paste these sub parts in any microsoft word or any online document then what i used to do was i used to go to pre- previous year questions starting from so for last year i did 2020 and uh, you know uh, reverse order from that uh, year and then i used to see the read the question and see under which sub part it is been asked for 
So suppose there is a question on cyber security or something. So then wherever the cyber security is mentioned in the syllabus, suppose I'm doing for GS3, I used to uh, copy paste that question under that sub part. And I should do this for a uh, minimum seven to eight previous year papers, right? So after that, I used to see which sub part in and what areas are being focused. So if you see nanotechnology, biotechnology, and all of these are focused more and more in science. So while, while if, if I'm doing science, I will focus on these uh, topics more. Disaster management, you know, uh, landslides, earthquakes, these are asked more. In geography, you know, volcano formation and all of these things are asked more. Suppose I'm giving an example. So I will have an idea about what kind of questions are asked by UPSC under what subpart. Now I have 20 subparts marked in GS1 and then I have the questions marked under them. I know a basic pattern of what is asked. Then what I will do is I will go back to my prelims notes of wherever I'm, I'm studying names from, right? And I will try to make around three to four page short notes about each subpart. So suppose there is a subpart on history, uh, specific sub, a specific thing. I used to just uh, make three to four pages note or maximum five pages, not more than that, in which I would have, uh, again, uh, written an analytical thing. So suppose you're, you're, you're studying modern history in GS1, right? So in prelims, what we focus is more on dates, the sessions, where it were held, who was the chairman. But when it comes to mains part, the analytical thing changes. So the uh, theory remains the same, the application changes in prelims and mains. So in mains, what you have to do is you have to understand who were the participants, what were the major you know, tactics of uh, uh, movements and everything, these analytical things. So I think those points uh, will go in my notes. And apart from that, if there is some specific information I have to put, those things will go. Now, this is the uh, reading of the sub part, how to apply this, right? Because that is the main, the answer writing is the main thing. So what I do is I used to take any, any sectional test series, full length, full, uh, full test series. And uh, I used to see uh, that, uh, so suppose there is GS1, right? So uh, in every sectional test series, so suppose GS1, seven to eight sub parts would be part of the first paper. So now once I'm done doing the theory part of my seven to eight sub parts of GS1, I would write the mains answer, uh, the sectional test. And when I'm writing this, I'm not uh, doing it in an exam setting. Currently, I'm not doing that. What I'm doing, I'm brainstorming. So what I'll do is I'll open test one. Suppose, uh, suppose if sleepy classes is providing that section test series, suppose. So in that uh, test, suppose test one is six to seven subparts of GS1 paper. I used to open that paper, read the first question, uh, mark, uh, this is subpart one, this is subpart two, this is subpart three. Then I used to brainstorm. Okay, if this question came in the final day, what would have been my introduction? What would be the keywords of my introduction? If there is a definition, if there is a data, whatever. And I used to scribble that. Then I used to uh, come to the first uh, subpart that the question is asking. Uh, write down five points, six points, how much ever points I'm remembering, I would just scribble, scribble, scribble next to the, you know, next to the sheet, the, the test series. And then I used to do this for, and then uh, ending with conclusion, I used to write what thing, what way forward I would write in the conclusion. And then I used to end. After doing the scribbling thing, the brainstorming thing, I would read the model solution. Then I will see, okay, my introduction was this, an ideal introduction could have been this. Now, suppose I think my introduction is better Then well and good. My mind is helping me reach that introduction. Now, suppose there was a better introduction uh, in the uh, model answer. So first I will know what the introduction was. So again, we have a tendency of remembering our mistakes more than what we did right, right? So this will become very mechanical and then we'll always remember the next time such question will come. We will remember both what we approached, what the actual approach was. So we will always end up writing good answers in that. And after that, this is the brainstorming part, right? And if there is some data that was there in the model solution, and I think that, okay, this data or this graph or anything that can be included, I will include it in my three to five page notes so that that part is done. And after doing this, suppose six, seven subparts today, then the next section of paper would have another six, seven subparts. And like this, after three to four test papers, uh, this brainstorming exercise in like three to four or five days maximum, I would give one full length test of GS1. So in that, what I've done is I've done the theory, I've done the brainstorming, and now I'm applying that in the real exam hall settings. So uh, every five days or four days, whatever, uh, how much time you have for maze preparation, this would this should be your strategy. This is for GS1, GS2, GS3. And then after that, uh, when, you know, maze 365 comes, you have to make down notes out of these because those are the contemporary things. That is not the static thing. So once you've made down the notes, you will not forget the articles. You will not forget the acts, you know, the major points, the major data, and whatever you think is relevant, you put in your three to five page notes, make sure you don't have notes more than that. Otherwise it will not be, you know, possible to revise at the end of the day. So after doing this exercise, every GS one, two or three, 
hardly there would be 100 to 120 pages notes at the end of you know for a, every paper and this you can revise between the papers also you know just while going to the exam also you can revise these and these things will get replicated in your answers because that is the ultimate thing that is going in front of the examiner so i think yes one two and three uh, would have been this strategy solving uh, understanding the theory so i may brainstorming the test series and then you know giving that one full length paper for everything and then you can do this in cycles as much time as you have so you know these things will get cemented inside your head uh, this uh, is the gs123 part uh, then comes the ethics part for ethics i used to follow a very simple strategy uh, read the syllabus take down all the keywords that i think so suppose emotional intelligence is a keyword integrity aptitude like this whatever is there in the syllabus I think this is around 28 to 35 keywords that is there in the syllabus. I used to give two, two pages to every keyword. And then uh, I used to, again, for uh, ethics, I followed sleepy classes extensively to understanding the concepts. So suppose I'm, de I'm doing integrity. I'll see what is there, uh, how, how Sarah has taught integrity in that. And then I used to understand, okay, integrity. So I have a basic understanding of what is integrity. Then I used to Google, or if there is a definition available in, you know, uh, Strippy classes notes or uh, Vajiram yellow books or whatever you're doing for uh, ethics, take down that three to four line accurate definition of integrity, which will be there in your two to three pages. So your two to three pages would be first, suppose you're, uh, you're going for integrity, first is the definition part. So three uh, or two, four line definition of integrity. Then understanding remains in your brain. You don't have to write it in your notes, right? In your notes, a definition should be there. Then three types of examples should be there. First type of example uh, can be a personal example, but it shouldn't be that personal that it becomes unrelatable for the examiner. It should be a generic personal example, right? The second uh, type of examples that are the most accurate ones are the administrative examples. Try writing this more and including this more in your answers because ultimately you're giving the exam for becoming an administrator, right? So I give this example, suppose for emotional intelligence, uh, no, for compassion, what I did was, so uh, there is a lot many examples going around in the market, but while I was reading newspapers or because it was COVID time, right? So I was reading newspapers and this, there was this example where in Delhi police held mm -hmm. all the uh, sex workers, uh, they employed them because again, during COVID, they went all jobless, right? Mm -hmm. So then they employed them in dia making during Diwali. So I think this is a good administrative example to show how compassion can actually help people, right? And this is implementable also. And because Delhi police was doing so administratively also, this was very practical. So this went into my compassion example. Now, there are many examples that you can find in the books, but these new examples will always help examiners think that you have put in brain in your thought. So this can come, uh, you know, while you have that approach that while you're reading newspaper, if you find something relevant or, you know, interesting, you can definitely put it in your notes. So I think, uh, Three examples. So the second part was the administrative example. The third part can be the mythological examples or, you know, the spiritual examples, as I call them. If you find them good, you can, uh, you can include them in your notes. So integrity has definition than these three kind of examples. Another thing that used to be there in my notes is the uh, flow charts or the pie charts or, you know, vein diagrams. If anything that is possible in that under that keyword. If you find it in some model copies, anything, anywhere, you include them. So that, again, your answer becomes a little more readable. And, you know, it will break the monotony for the examiner. Once I've done all of this, this is my notes for integrity. So like this, for every keyword, I used to do this. So the static part, the first part of ethics, this uh, would have been this. Then comes the case study part. Again, case study part, I think, is an extension of the static part. Just that you have to present it differently. So suppose there's a case study given. When you're writing that answer, what you do is in the first para, you mention that the above case study deals with the issue of this, 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 something, right? In two to three lines, you've told the examiner that I've understood what is the key ethical dilemma or the ethical concern that is in this case study. Then you start addressing what, what all ABCD has been asked. Use the examples from the static part very liberally in your case studies. So if you have, again, as the Delhi police example, as I was giving, right? If, 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 if uh, it deals with something that can be mentioned in the case study, you can write, for example, Delhi police did this. So it substantiate what you're trying to do. It has been done. It is applicable and practical. Use constitutional articles. So suppose you're uh, writing on something on environmental sustainability in the, ethical, uh, in the case study. Use DPSPs liberally or, you know, any Supreme Honorable Supreme Court's act, acts if you're doing, you know, use these liberally in your case studies. And then at the end, what you do when you uh, address all the subparts that are asked in the ethical case study, you conclude by saying, uh, he, by doing the above things, I have ensured that suppose I or, you know, somebody, Manish or whoever that uh, person addressed, Manish has showed that he or she is an 
emotionally intelligent, compassionate, or whatever the key traits that were required to de deal with that ethical issue. Uh, that he or she is this, 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 this. So I think you have to end your answer. And then again, this is not a fixed template. It can vary based on the questions, answers, you know. But then if you follow this, you have you you try to you know show the examiner that I have dealt with the issue. So I think in this sense, ethics paper and the preparation part goes. And again, that sectional test and brainstorming, all that is general. That has to be done for every paper and writing that test after, you know, three to four or five days as and when you feel that, you know, you're ready for writing it. So I think this needs to be done. It's wonderful. As you said, this may not be the only template, but it's a very, very reliable template. Reliable. It's a very, very reproducible template. Yes, sir. you can you can do it day after day, week after week, month after month. You can reproduce it in the exam again year after year. Correct. You may very well not need to, but if if there comes such a situation, it's something that you can reproduce year after year and actually build upon. Correct. Right, you can take all the knowledge from the previous year and take it forward the next year and add more examples to it Correct. and add more insights and understanding to it. So that's a, that's a wonderful strategy. I must say it's a very, very detailed and comprehensive strategy, Kushal. I'm, I'm very happy to hear this. I'd be very happy to share this with future aspirants as well. Uh, we've missed one uh, often ignored aspect of the paper, which is the essay paper. So what, what was your uh, planning going about that? So I think essay forms one of the most key aspects that will you know help you get selected or you know uh, not recommended, as I would say. So I think essay, uh, again, uh, if you see the last, uh, you know, uh, three to four or, or rather than, yeah, uh, the year that I got into civil services, essay has been turn, turning into philosophical, you know, nightmares, honestly. <laughs> so uh, in, in 2018, I remember when I wrote means there was out of the section A and section B, only one, one philosophical essay would have been there. And my senior suggested that, you know, uh, consider that there are not four options, only three options. Don't think that you have to write on philosophical essay, you know, just eliminate that option. So I followed that. Uh, then, you know, then, then they started giving all uh, one section completely philosophical so that you cannot ignore the philosophical. Thing. Correct. Then we moved towards writing one philosophical and one static uh, essay. Then this year, unfortunately, they have moved towards all philosophical, all right? philosophical, both sections philosophical. So I think now you have to prepare for that. If static essay comes well and good, it, it is, you know, easy for all of us, but then prepare for the hardest so that, you know, you don't feel that nerves on Correct. the final day. Correct. So I think for philosophical part, uh, first thing that need to be understood is there's no, there's no one strategy. Honestly, you have to let your thoughts run wild because UPSC gives you that time. So in GS, we don't have that time to think, but in essay, we have ample time to think. I have not met one aspirant who told me that, you know, essay paper should get. It's not a thing that <laughs> happens, right? That's so true. UPSC gives you a liberal amount of time to think. And because now... Uh, they are moving to philosophical essays. One liberty that we got is we don't have to write much. If we have understood the thoughts, so suppose there are 12 pages, even if you fill 11, well and good. There's no issue because you have, you're going to explain a philosophical thought, right? So it might, you might fall short of dimensions or, you know, what to write or everything. Having said that, uh, essay needs to be prepared extensively. But again, first thing that you need to do is you have to take out, take out all the copies of the toppers that scored very high in essay. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a top 50 person. No, even if a 300 or 400 rank person has scored very high in essays, please take out all the copies online, available online. I am assuming they will be available, right? Because the institutes put up those copies. So I think uh, take uh, take all the copies of like, you know, three, four, five choppers like that. Read those essays uh, and um, preferably the philosophical ones so that you understand how to build a, an essay around a philosophical thought. So suppose uh, last time there was an essay of uh, uh, self-discovery has been technologically outsourced, something like that. Yeah. Now, you cannot put that template of essay into it, right? That, uh, you know, what we used to do is uh, pestle, I think, pestle, political. Pestle, right, not, yeah, right. something like that. Yeah. Now you cannot do that because now this is not matching, right? So don't try to forcefully, you know, put that uh, into it. What you do is you first read the four essays, whichever you think is the easiest one. Now, uh, I remember seniors telling me that don't attempt the easiest one because everybody is attempting that. So you will never stand out. Now, all that uh, all that cushion and uh, liberty has gone because you have to write philosophical essays, right? So please go for the easiest one according to you. So the first part is take time in choosing the essay. 
because again, if you miss the philosophical part, many people in this year has score, have scored around 80, 70 marks in essay, which clearly shows that then one essay has not has, essay has not been evaluated because they missed that philosophical thought, right? And many, many of my friends who have missed um, uh, this because they scored 80, 70, 80, maximum 85 something. And people who have gone, uh, who have gotten both of their essays evaluated, like uh, me, have uh, scored around, you know, for top 50 average, I'm telling 130 to 133 plus in essays. So what you have to do is first is the selection of the easiest essay according to you. Then second is, if, if, if pastel is applicable, well and good, it is applicable for all of you. But if it is not, suppose in this year, it was not uh, applicable, right? So what you do is you brainstorm all the dimensions, just, just brainstorm inside your head or, or keep writing one or two, one or two words that, okay. So suppose in, uh, you know, technology, uh, cell discovery has been technologically outsourced. Uh, dimensions that I could think was that, uh, okay, in health, what we do is we rely on, you know, Fitbits and we rely on everything technologically to tell us what we are feeling, honestly, right? right, right. Then it comes to opinions. Now, everybody, uh, because of artificial intelligence, I would know whether I'm right wing, left wing, whether I'm, you know, uh, you know, supporter of this group, that group based on the searches that I'm doing, right? And if I've searched it one time, then all the pages is related to that will come up. And eventually I'll end up forming an opinion in support or, you know, in against of one Absolutely. or the other group, right? Absolutely. Now, again, this is self-discovery that has been technologically outsourced. We are, we are subconsciously outsourcing this only. Correct. So this is one dimension that came into my mind. Then, uh, then in education, it, it comes that, you know, again, if I am a topper or not based on, is based today on the amount of online resources that are available to me on the amount of, so suppose if I have a good internet connection, good laptop, you know, good money right. to access to all these international global resources. Again, my self-discovery would be that, okay, I'm, a, I'm an overachiever. And if suppose somebody unfortunately is not access to it, they will keep thinking that they're inferior again. So like this, suppose all the dimensions that comes into my mind, I kept just noting down all the dimensions. Right, right. And after that, uh, and then again, I, I extended them because again, these are all personal dimensions. Then we have to, again, you know, that society and then country and international, that is again, one of the templates that can be followed. So taking like in diplomatically, so I did that uh, countries are uh, realizing their potential in the world order based on the technology now. So Israel is a very small country, but because it is technologically so superior, their discovery in the global order is very high. Right. right. So again, that has again been technologically outsourced. And then we are doing all the, so suppose uh, Arabic countries, now they are doing their relations because again, they are moving, diversifying their basket. They're adopting technology and everything, right? So I related it to that. So then all these dimensions that were coming in my brain, I just, just uh, noted them down. And then I tried to build an essay around it. And then, I, so introduction, so what I do is, this is my thumb ruling essay. One thing that I keep following, irrespective of whether it's philosophical or static is, I start with an anecdote. Now, what can anecdote be? An anecdote uh, is basically a short story, right? So suppose this was the topic. I'm taking this topic because it's more relatable and very new, right? So in this topic, what I did was I always take a girl, uh, preferably a tribal girl and preferably from Northeastern India, right? So what I do is I try to suppose there is an essay on education, technology, whatever. I try to empower her that uh, this, this girl from this, this uh, village in Nagaland or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, recently, uh, you know, were, was provided a tablet, phone, whatever. And then, you know, she figured this world and then, you know, she connected and then now she is whatever, whichever exam she was pursuing. So she was able to study and then this, that, and now she's going to join IIT Delhi, IIT Madras, whatever. Okay? So I used to start that story. And then in the following passage, I used to write just like her, uh, like the above anecdote shows that, you know, if technology is provided to this, this it can empower millions like Jyoti, suppose, right? So this would have been this. So in this example, I said that this one girl who's a corporate employee, uh, she relies on this for that, this for that, this for that. And every technology aspect was related to her life. And after that, I said, just like her, uh, you know, most of us are, you know, just And then I started giving dimensions to substantiate my viewpoint. And then at the end, I said how to not fall in this trap, right? That uh, we we, used to read, we uh, need to read books, we need to talk to peers, we need to take advice about ourselves from our parents, you know, whatever. So that we are, uh, you know, better aware of us, uh, our choices or whatever, and not relying on technology. So this is how I approach this essay. So the uh, whole point of the crux was uh, preparation of essay needs to be there by first reading the topper's copies, second practicing essays. So you can take any test series or whatever, you have to practice one essay 
one essay paper in 10 days minimum not more than that so that you are in touch with you know writing philosophical essays you are in touch with letting your thoughts run wild in those uh, constrained environments right so i think that and then again uh, pattern can change again and the static part can re uh, again uh, reappear right so what you do is take yojana so uh, yojana magazine you don't have to read the entire magazine just the first page of it is the editor's note in which the editor has tried to summarize the entire book into four or five very flowing paragraphs so what you will do is for every book take that one page so 12 pages is there for 12 months and then you read those so first you will have the content and second you will understand how to write a good flowing four to five paragraphs about a topic so i think that exercise really helps in you know uh people ask the connecting lines what should be the connecting lines how to switch to paras i think that practice will help you do this so i think if you're doing that i think uh, the static part and then again obviously when you're reading gs you're preparing for essay and then you have data that you can you know interchange very easily then you can divide it into themes and all that was static part now we're talking more about the philosophical that is being asked right so be very innovative on that like uh, in gs i say be very mechanical because you know the questions will come divide into sub parts write this write introduction conclusion and the answer move to the next one but in essay i always suggest be very creative go with that mindset that i will think today and i will write a good innovative essay and i will uh, you know let my thoughts run very wild and then you know think about many dimensions not apart from pastel also and you know keep connecting with these things if you can and then the second essay that was there i think it was uh, something like uh, the easiest one was i think there are best practices to better practices or there are better practices to best practices yeah. now in this you can easily put your pastel format because again in uh, in polity how you can put i i said okay elections now evm is a very good concept you know it has removed all the muscle power all the uh, good capturing all of that it has removed so it is a best practice of now but it can be made better right all the electoral reforms Correct. you can Correct. mention there then in economy also we can say we are moving towards you know 5 trillion this that and then whatever but then can it be made better obviously so all these dimensions can be made better right so this in this essay pastel format is uh getting fixed so i use that so suppose uh, if i find two essays in which i can put pastel format and one innovative i will give a little more 10 to 15 minutes more to the innovative essay so all these things need to be done there now this will this may not repeat the next year right so you have to be ready to think your, your preparation should be extensive but you should be ready to think in essay i think this would be my strategy correct i'll i'll just again very very comprehensive probably i'll just add one line for everybody watching if you can apply pastel to any essay it suddenly becomes a topical essay and not really a philosophical essay because Correct. that's given you a framework framework by which you can approach uh, as you said in a very very mechanical manner not really mechanical but just pulling out facts and knowledge and information mm -hmm. from something that you already know of Correct. right if gender is a dimension if poverty is a dimension if uh, if caste is a dimension uh, all these things you've already read health as a dimension nutrition as a dimension you already have a lot of information but as the topic that you discussed that self discovery has been outsourced to technology probably you've not thought about these things at home you yes. will need to apply your thought in the examination so probably you'll need that 10 15 extra minutes yes. like I, when we were discussing this this topic uh, when when the exam was conducted we added uh, as you said yourself <laughs> your political self identity is aided by the algorithms of the googles and the facebooks of the world right. because you search a couple of news and only such similar sort of uh, politically motivated articles you will be getting on your feed similarly your choices in music your choices in movies everything which is part of your life is driven by algorithm right, right? so it's just so it's it's such a wonderful thing uh, to think about to write about i don't know about the reality but again this is something that on on the day of the exam you have to keep an open mind let it run wild and just put it into words as simply as possible correct right excellent so one last component for the mains examination which is uh, your optional and your optional was sociology yes please tell us something about that uh okay so it was uh, i was not scoring very well in my three attempts like not when when i say not very well i mean around 210s and 220s right and uh, this was making me miss the list by one mark two mark every year so two years i missed the reserve list by one one mark right so i knew that this was the issue 
in my selection and the day i can rectify it i'll find my name in the list so in this attempt what i did was a i had a little a very less time right so i tried to start from scratch my sociology again now the mistakes that i did was first i will come to that then i'll tell you how i rectified them so the first thing that i think i was making the mistake was i knew the concepts and i knew them very well so suppose there's a concept on you know suicide for dorkheim i would i would know that what dorkheim has said but i would not really be comfortable in writing the introduction part how to you know how to put that in two pages or how to address the question so if if the question is uh, like criticize suicide theory of dorkheim i would rather start explaining what the suicide theory was and i would not really structure my answer very well so i think that was costing me right this was happening because i had the class notes i only for optional i did my coaching for everything else i devised my own strategy which i think was more fruitful in the long run but for optional because i am an engineer uh, i opted for an uh, sociology option so i uh, went to coaching but again for in 2 3 months i realized that this is not my cup of tea like i need to do this alone so i so what i was doing i was just reading the class notes and not really, i was not really making short notes out of it or i was not really and in sociology there's or any option for that matter uh, model answers are not being provided by the uh, institutes if you see for gs every institute and everything there would be topers copies model answers but in optional you will not find them and even if you find there would be not they would not be a very good quality and and the same goes for the uh, checking aspect of the test series for uh, for optional people i i don't know what is wrong with institutes but it is not really up to the mark as per the gs standards right so uh, 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 an aspirant will never really know that he or she is going right or wrong because if you have filled two pages they will give you you know 4.5 out of 10 if you whatever so that is that becomes that becomes a very uh, generic thing which will not help you really point out your flaws so this was the mistake that i was doing i was only reading the concepts i was not really applying them in the uh, question answer format and uh, so this i rectified so what i did in this attempt was the first thing i did and i would suggest everybody to do is uh, go through the so sub, download the topers copy so we all have our telegram channels right so we upload our uh, topers our, our uh, optional copies the test series part of it so i followed jagrati avasthi ma'am rank 2 of last year right she again was sociology optional so uh, uh, her around 6 to 8 copies were available online so first i downloaded those then what i did was i went back to my notes or whatever and i i followed sleepy classes videos for that and i also mentioned it in my mail that i followed them so what i did was i understood the concept i, I knew most of the concepts because i had given three names to that but then i understood it how to write an answer so in uh, sleepy classes uh, one thing that i would like to appreciate is they provide notes and the notes about a, a very uh, basic topic will be in points that i think uh, you guys have uh, take care of it that they are available in very crisp and in points right so i would know the theory around it these points would help me understand how to write it in half page right you know that complete theory in half page so i made notes again of sociology so suppose uh, suicide is a topic that i'm talking about so in suicide i would mention that okay uh, emil dorkheim in his book lay suicide mentions suicide as so this would be my three lines first three lines you know the definition then comes the types of suicide that he has mentioned and then five to six critics uh, criticism whatever and then the uh, the conclusion part that you know uh, in his time you know he was right and then you know, times have changed and whatever that uh, in conclusion that we write or uh, you know put that india aspect into it in the conclusion so this would be in my two to three pages notes again for every topic i i consciously made this yeah, and specifically this is the static uh, the static part okay notes you will find notes and everything there is a lot of dynamic part in sociology and other options right uh, for which the coaching people just uh, the institute people just skip those parts that okay this is the gs part this is the gs part but we have to understand that in an optional part the answer should look sociologically inclined right absolutely so for those topics mostly the current affairs topics or even the dynamic topics i i specifically made notes out of these and i think that has helped me you know score around 148 or 147 my paper too also because these topics that people often ignore or think that we'll write a gs answer out of it i made sociological uh, notes out of it and i revised them extensively and i think sleepy classes helped me there as well so yeah so this was the strategy that i changed so uh, first thing i did was again topers uh, copy i downloaded then i made my own notes and then once i've completed a chunk of syllabus i used to take out questions from that topers copies only that uh, suppose uh, now jagriti ma'am has uh, had given uh, vikas ranjan's test series i believe so i used to download their uh, schedule now I, i used to see that test one has these these topics and i used to prepare those topics 
and then I go back to Jagrati ma'am's copies and I take down those questions, just the questions. And I used to write down answers. And once I've written down those answers, I used to compare it with her answers. So that to understand, okay, this is how a good answer is written and that is where I am. So every day I used to reduce that distance between my answer and her, her answer or for that matter because she was rewarded. So I considered that as, as a good answer, right? So I used to keep reducing this distance. And then uh, from this became my uh, answer practice. So more than test series and optional, I used to rely on this answer practice. And I had a group of three, four people who were giving it with sociology. And we should discuss that answer. And then we used to, you know, check each other's answers based on, you know, the model answer that ma'am was, ma'am had, ma'am had written. So I think uh, this technique really helped me in sociology right, this time. Because uh, if I was relying on just test series, I wasn't really getting that feedback, which was, you know, fetching me good marks, honestly. So I changed that strategy. I made my notes. I took her, took out all the topless copies, wrote the same answers that they have written and then tallied that what is missing or, you know, what more I could have added or anything. And then I, uh, I also used to do one thing that part of my theory was also reading sectional test series. So I followed for vision. People can follow who, uh, whatever they like. That suppose I've, I've done the thinkers part. Then I used to just, you know, read the thinkers, uh, the questions. The first the question I, uh, I will read from the sectional test series, which has the thinkers part as the syllabus. I used to read the question. I used to again brainstorm. Okay, I would write this, 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 this. And then I used to read the answer. What this will do is, A, it will, again, uh, help me revise my theory. And B, what it will do is, it will give me some one or two thinkers that will not be there in my notes. You know, some new thinkers. So, suppose in the globalization type of questions, where there are not many thinkers in COVID or anything, uh, these people would have researched. I think every institute does that. They would have researched that. And that one or two thinkers that uh, I remember uh, some Sushwana Zuboff or somebody. So she has mentioned on how, you know, if technology is used better, it will help industrial relations. If it is not, if it is used, you know, as a centralized thing, it will just centralize relations. It will not de uh, you know, decentralize it. So I mentioned it somewhere in my notes. So I'm assuming this one or two, you know, new thinkers or something will, would have helped me fetch marks. So this will, uh, this will come only when you're reading those sectional answers. Otherwise you will not find these thinkers. And some people say, should we read, uh, should we uh, read specific thinkers, you know, new thinkers. Now that is a waste of time. You, you can just go through these sectional uh, questions. You can take out thinkers if you feel and not more than one or two thinkers per topic, not more than that, because you will not remember, you will not be able to reproduce in your answers. So it will become an exercise in futile, right? So I think this, all this I did for optional, which has helped you know, score around 270 this time, I feel. We actually make sure that we include all of this in the sociology course that we have. Mm -hmm. So a lot of students actually, uh, like I'll probably you'll meet them in the academy. There are a couple of students who switched their optional from mathematics. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, a student of Deep Agarwal, he'll be joining. He's uh, got one fiftieth rank. He switched from mathematics, spent five or six months doing the course. And every value addition in terms of current affairs, in terms of those additional uh, thinkers that you can quote, because you don't need to really read about those thinkers. That's Correct. that's sort of now our job now. Mm. We read about those things and we'll say, okay, here's a couple of lines of what this thinker has said, and this can be relevant here, and we've added to the course. So a couple of our students have actually got 289 and 28. So that makes us really, really happy. In fact, you mentioned Jagrati. She was a, she also mentioned Sleepy Classes as a sociology mm. playlist last year in a lot of videos. Yes. So that's that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, I've I've had such a wonderful time talking to you, Kushal. Your strategy has been so detailed. I, I genuinely hope everyone who's, who watches this video, watches it till the end, actually makes a note of whatever you mentioned and follows it to the T for the next 12 to 15 months. And if students can actually replicate this sooner or later, they will be successful. It's as you said, if, if once you get your basic foundational strategy in place and you do it, it's only a matter of time then. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Kushal. Uh, it's, yes. it's been wonderful talking to you and uh, we'll hopefully get to see you, get to meet you in person and whatever you've said will benefit many, many, many more students to come. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.